Now, the speaker is uh, Dr. N. Venkaya. Now, he's working as associate professor at the Department of Mechanical Engineering in IIT Tirupati. And uh, apart from that, he's already the dean of uh, students' affairs in IIT Tirupati. To look at his educational background, he completed his BTEC in uh, year 1999 from uh, SV University Tirupati. And he completed his ME in manufacturing technology in the year 2000 from NIT Tiruchirappalli. And he completed his uh, PhD in 2010 in the manufacturing engineering area from IIT Madras. Uh, Sir has a uh, uh, total 15 years of um, experience as a teacher. And in his career, he taught many subjects like uh, manufacturing processes, metrology, engineering drawing, machine drawing, manufacturing systems, additive manufacturing, mechatronics, SIM, CAD, uh, advanced manufacturing processes and like that. And if you look at the research uh, area of uh, the speaker, his re research area of, uh, sorry, his area of research is um, engineering metrology, electric discharge machining, additive manufacturing, modeling and optimization techniques, computational geometric techniques. And under him, uh, uh, he already guided two PhD students and right now under him seven PhD scholars are doing their uh, PhD and three MS research students are uh, taking the guide from this uh, speaker. And if you look at the guidance uh, at the MTech level, he already completed 30 MTech projects. And uh, about the publications, 30 publications he already published in the various international journals and conferences. And sponsored projects um, are already 60 lakh worth of sponsored projects um, is already on the head of the speaker. Uh, DST sponsored project, experimental studies on wire electric discharge machining is one of the projects. And next is uh, NME ICT pedagogy project, uh, development of mechatronics courses, that's a web-based one. And next is NMRL project, uh, that is narrow groove welding. And in his career, so I'll, I'll develop some uh, uh, algorithms. Uh, he developed 10 algorithms to evaluate circular and cylindrical components. And along with that, he developed four other algorithms to optimize uh, EDM parameters. And the speaker is a reviewer for various journals, like the International Journal of uh, Advanced uh, uh, Manufacturing Technology, Journal of Engineering Manufacture, Journal of Brazilian Society of Mechanical Science and Engineering, Journal of Process Mechanical Engineering. And in his career, Sar has visited uh, a few countries like UK and USA. And uh, he was awarded as a Young Scientist Project Award in 2013 from Department of Science and Technology, Government of India. So with this, uh, I conclude the introduction. And now I request uh, Venkai Garu to uh, start his lecture. Yeah, thank you, uh, Dr. Jaikaran, for the introduction. Good morning, all the participants. Uh, Welcome back. Yesterday, uh, we discussed the uh, additive manufacturing, basically overview. And uh, today, let me uh, present some of the concepts uh, related to industrial Internet of Things. So before we get into industrial Internet of Things, let me give you a brief uh, history leading to interna uh, industrial Internet of uh, Things so that uh, you know you will be uh, able to put this particular topic uh, iiot in uh, right perspective uh, in the history so the you know industrial first industrial revolution has started uh, in the 18th century uh, somewhere around uh, 1712 uh, with the you know invention of uh, piston and uh, cylinder concept right and so Based on this concept, piston and cylinder, James Watt built his steam engine uh, to help the workers. And that engine was primarily used uh, for pumping the water, for pumping the water out of, uh, you know, coal mines. Yeah, you can see the, uh, 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 these uh, peaks, which are historic. And during this uh, industry 1.0, we call it, Industrial Revolution One. So during this period, in the in the 18th century, early 18th century, the production capabilities increased, 
this is where uh, you know the concept of uh, owners, managers, employees, and uh, you know the concept of serving the customers. All these concepts have been uh, emerged during this uh, you know period. Uh, before that, it was only you know cottage industries where. Uh, you know the things were manufactured for their own consumption the manufacturing was done uh, for their own consumption but the industrial revolution one has uh, you know uh, witnessed serving other people manufacturing is uh, done by somebody and i uh, you know consumers are somebody else so this concept has come into picture during this uh, industry 1.0 in the industry 2.0 that is uh, you can witness uh, beginning of the 20th century. Uh, so this is where electricity has come into you know picture, and uh, electricity has uh, people started using electricity as the primary source of power. Uh, so obviously, as you we are all aware, uh, electricity brings that you know convenience, flexibility. Uh, you know, in terms of uh, usage, all that. So the machines were designed, uh, you know, with their own power sources. See, a machine, uh, you can see even now conventional, you know, uh, a lathe or milling machine, for example, it is attached with its own electric motor these days. So this has happened in the early beginning of, uh, you know, uh, 20th century. So every machine is equipped with its own power source. That is how the machines uh, were designed for the sake of uh, you know convenience. <coughs> each machine, each machine was self-sufficient. So the later uh, you know management programs have been developed uh, in the universities, and uh, you know people people started uh, you know uh, increasing the efficiency and effectiveness of the manufacturing facilities with the use of these man, you know management uh, programs so the you know this is where uh, you know labor were divided earlier the entire product uh, was you know manufactured by single person all right uh, but this is the period where the tasks have been divided so that each person is allocated with a specific task. For example, one person will be doing, uh, you know, turning operation. Another person, this job will go to the next uh, section where uh, drilling may be done. Okay. Another person is, another worker is assigned for drilling operation. So this way, the obviously the expertise, expertise on the part of the workers enormously increases. And, uh, you know, obviously, as a result, the productivity also increases when you divide the uh, tasks among the workers and also accountability increases on the part of the worker so this is the period again uh, a major uh, you know game changer uh, has happened that is mass production so earlier the you know components were produced in limited quantities but in uh, industry 2.0 Mass production has come into picture where thousands and lakhs of components uh, were produced in the same plant. Of course, the credit goes to the concept of assembly lines. So the the company, the, the uh, entire product manufacturing, it starts at one end in the factory, and uh, you know you will have series of machines and uh, you know processing stations. By the time it comes out at the other end, it is a finished product with all the testing, everything done, with the, including the packing, right? So the assembly lines, uh, you know, this concept has uh, enabled the mass production of the components. So uh, for the, you know, effectiveness or efficiency of the manufacturing facilities, a lot of credit goes to uh, F.W. Taylor, who, uh, you know, introduced the concepts of uh, uh, you know, optimizing the worker uh, efficiency and also, you know, he, uh, yeah, through the use of, uh, you know, different uh, work study methods, all that. So, and just in time and lean manufacturing, these are the concepts, uh, 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 you know, developed in, uh, in uh, Japan. Uh, so, these concepts further 
you know, enhance the productivity, quality aspects of the manufacturing processes. So, so major developments took place in uh, Industry 2.0. And then Industry 3.0, this is the period where, you know, uh, uh, in the last few decades of uh, 20th century, especially 90s, uh, that time, okay. So here, electronic devices like uh, transistors, integrated uh, circuit chips, these uh, devices uh, have come and, you know, they, they, they brought about, uh, you know, a lot of uh, changes in the manufacturing industry. So you have the fully automated individual machines, uh, which can, uh, you know, uh, you know, supplement the workers or operators or even completely, you know, replace the operators. So without any human assistance, machine has to work. That is the, that is what we are seeing now in the case of CNC machines, CNC machines, right? So only, you know, the worker may be loading the workpiece into the machine and then everything will be, uh, you know, uh, taken care of by the machine itself. So your programs, whatever you have loaded, so everything will be taken care of by the machine itself and uh, you will get the finished product. So that way, uh, you know, earlier one uh, operator used to be there at one machine in the case of conventional machines. With the introduction of CNC machines, one operator is able to, you know, manage a uh, few machines, few CNC machines, okay? Especially, you know, if there is some problem with the machine, he has to attend that and, you know, loading the work pieces. Uh, and, you know, attending the maintenance issues. Basically, those are the, you know, uh, that is the scope of the operator with the introduction of, uh, you know, automated machines like CNC machines. Yeah, you know, even loading the workpiece is, uh, you know, not required if you, you know, a little bit go uh, further, uh, you know, and use the robot to load the workpiece. So, the software is uh, another component which is added to the manufacturing uh, industry. So software systems, uh, you know, uh, they, they integrate basically uh, the physical devices, all right. And the MRP was very prevalent till that time. MRP, uh, what is it, uh, you know, um, uh, what is the function of MRP? It is basically you want to manufacture a particular product. What are the various materials required or what are the various spare parts required in how many quantities they are to be ordered uh, what is the inventory to be maintained so all these details are part of MRP okay, for a particular uh, product so this MRP has been replaced by uh, you know enterprise resource planning ERP so as the name indicates uh, see MRP is for one product ERP is uh, you know, it encompasses all the elements or components, aspects of the entire enterprise, right? Right from the uh, ordering of the component by the customer, right? Designing, manufacturing, testing, packing, shipping to the customer, okay? Feedback from the customer. So internal uh, documents, all those things. So everything is encompassed uh, in the in the ERP system. So this is another major development in industry 3.0. So the manufacturing uh, pushed uh, to the low cost countries uh, during this period. Uh, the you know major countries, uh, like, you know developed countries, uh, were uh, you know they thought uh, you know we will design the. Uh, things and then you know, let manufacturing be carried out in, in, in other countries because this manufacturing uh, you know leads to a lot of pollution all that so that's the reason uh, developed countries consciously push this uh, manufacturing into you know other countries so that they can be free of the pollution aspects all those things of course it uh, you know provided the you know employment uh, to the people in the other countries all that so it has other side also, pollution aspects, all those things. So supply chain management concept has come in this uh, period uh, extensively. Uh, there is no supply chain management. So the yeah, entire thing, entire supply logistics, uh, entire logistics uh, have been taken care in this uh, system. So finally, we are into industry 4.0 now. 
So this is, uh, you know, uh, 21st century, this uh, Industry 4.0 has been witnessed. And uh, here, Internet of Things uh, is the concept. Okay. So what has happened here, you know, you, you are connecting the various physical devices using the, uh, you know, software. Right. So it is like, you know, system of systems. That is the concept these days. So basically it involves uh, sharing the information. Okay, that means collecting a lot of data from the, uh, you know, machines or, you know, devices, analyzing the data, okay, learning from the data, and then, you know, taking the action and implementing that. So all these things are part of the, in the you know, Internet of Things. So Industry 4.0 incorporates uh, various cutting-edge technologies which can include your robotics, additive manufacturing, artificial intelligence, advanced materials, augmented reality, okay, all that. So, your, uh, further, your product life cycle management, product life cycle management uh, has been introduced, uh, you know, later 20th century. <clears throat> so, product life cycle management, what is it? Uh, you must have already heard about this product life cycle management. What does it uh, involve? Can anybody respond? Um, uh, the PLM is a uh, it's a process of uh, project management uh, it's in, from its uh, inception to the uh, retirement. Like uh, we'll be looking at how to design, how to manufacture, how to sell, uh, and how to maintain our service. So those things uh, uh, will be eventually uh, we'll be looking into that. So the product life cycle management. Uh, is all about, uh, you know, uh, the information about the product. Right from the inception of the product, the design uh, aspects, manufacturing, you know, testing, uh, packing, shipping, uh, then, uh, you know, getting the customer feedback. So, all these things are part of the product life cycle management, okay? So, the entire information is available with the, you know, designer. To, to you know, revise the designs so as to uh, you know improve the product uh, you know life all that so that is the advantage with the product life cycle management that is uh, one of the you know developments uh, witnessed in uh, industry 4.0 so if you look at this particular uh, graph this is very interesting uh, graph uh, up to 1500 you can see india uh, was way ahead of uh, you know uh, all the countries uh, in the world okay in terms of uh, gdp percentage okay what is gdp gdp is a gross domestic product so it indicates the total uh, monetary uh, monetary value or market value of all the goods or services that are produced in a particular country okay so gdp indicates the growth of the country especially in the materialistic uh, uh, world okay so Ever, you know, till that time, it was all conventional, you know, uh, way of doing the things, uh, you know, manufacturing or whatever. So the people were extensively used and animals were used, okay. Until that time, India was, uh, you know, very uh, good in terms of the GDP. And the moment, uh, you know, the industry 1.0 has been introduced somewhere in, uh, uh, somewhere in the, you know, 18th, uh, early 18th century, the, you can see sharp decline in the India, uh, India's uh, GDP, okay? And, uh, you, know, you know, second uh, industrial revolution and third industrial revolution, all these things happened in the early 20th and you know, late 20th centuries, all that. So you can you can see India has been declining in, uh, in terms of the GDP uh, up to probably, uh, you know, uh, till the independence, okay? And then after independence, you know, we are showing some signs of improvement the, the rate is uh, slow, but, you know, there is a steady uh, growth, okay? At least we are not declining, uh, you know, slowly we are, you know, improving in terms of the GDP uh, ever since uh, independence, okay? So today we are in the, you know, Industry 4.0, okay? So the Industry 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, all these things, one common characteristic of all these things is that uh, your systems were all independent. They were like, you know, islands. Your production is uh, one unit. Your marketing is a separate uh, 
uh, you know, division, some set of people will be looking at the marketing aspects and your engineering, you have a different, uh, you know, it is a separate unit again, okay. So they are all like, uh, you know, islands, islands of systems. But Industry 4.0, the hallmark of Industry 4.0 is that all these islands are connected by the internet, okay. So internet of things is the, uh, you know, uh, is the impetus here. So cyber physical systems is another, uh, you know, uh, recently coined term, cyber physical systems. So what does it, what does it do? It just tightly integrates all the functions like computing, communication, control technologies, all these things. So we call it, you know, smart manufacturing. So smart manufacturing, we have basically two motivating forces, push of the technology and the pull of the applications. Okay. So uh, you develop some technology and push it into the market. That is called the, uh, you know, uh, seller's, uh, seller driven market. Pull of the applications. All right. So you may have the customer requirements and they will have their own, uh, their own requirements, all that. And based on that, you develop the things and then, uh, you know, deliver the components or products. Okay. Pull of the applications. So both these things, uh, in fact, coexist even now. So industry 4.0, uh, industry 4.0 is uh, you know an end-to-end -end digitization of the automation. So for this to happen, you need to have Internet of Things, other concepts like artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, okay, and also cloud computing, digital twin. All these are uh, you know important elements or components of uh, industry 4.0. So you can look at uh, this particular figure. Uh, you need to have the sensors to 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 you know. Uh, capture the data from the environment and this data has to be communicated to the algorithms and the algorithms will be able to analyze the data okay learn from the data and then finally predict and, the, and the finally uh, you know you uh, you know take the decisions and then it has to be implemented acting okay so all these things are uh, done in a cycle so network of physical things is what is internet of things means so embedded, uh, you know, this is embedded with, uh, you know, sensor, software, other technologies, all that over the internet. So ability to sense, communicate, analyze, decide, and act. All these features are part and parcel of internet of things. So your smart home is one, uh, you know, excellent example uh, that you can think of uh, when you, when you, you know, uh, uh, consider this internet of things. So have different devices in the home. Okay. You, are, you have the AC systems, you have the, you know, heating systems, uh, you know, water, you know, geysers, all that. You have the, you know, kitchen appliances, uh, you have the fans, you have the security systems. There are different, uh, you know, systems which are, uh, which are there in the uh, home. Okay. So all these uh, systems may be integrated with the uh, internet. All those things may be, you know, connected to your mobile phone. Okay. And uh, so one, one example I can tell you the importance of this. So you are not at home. You went for a picnic for a week long, uh, you know. And then, you know, this has been, a, uh, you know, you're witnessing these days in the media that you know, when people were not there uh, at home, uh, you know, the, the roads will come and uh, the thieves will come and, you know, they just loot the house, okay. Uh, so whenever some, uh, intruder he, he is trying to you know get into the house then uh, you know you are um, you, you will get an alert in the mobile where you are maybe in Kashmir also provided you have the uh, you know Wi-Fi okay so uh, you will be getting the alert uh, you know whenever this incident is uh, you know uh, happening and then so that you will be able to alert the people around your relatives or you may give the uh, complaint you may you may alert in the police station all these things in a uh, just a few minutes so that you no know, people can uh, rush and then you know avert such kind of a situation that is what just one example in the case of internet of things when it comes to industrial internet of things it uh, basically happens in uh, in situ manufacturing okay during the manufacturing itself you can control the system you can you can control the process you can control the manufacturing process so this internet in uh, industrial internet of things we are in fact implementing here at uh, uh, IIT Tirupati. So we have a system here, wire arc additive manufacturing system, wherein robot is used to deposit a uh, bead. Okay. So 
when the bead is deposited, uh, it needs to have certain uh, you know quality parameters fulfilled before the next bead is uh, you know uh, deposited over it. For example, bead bead width. All right, bead width uh, should be controlled in in some tolerance levels. Okay, and there should not be excess spatter when the molten metal is uh, you know dropping uh, from the you know uh, robot. So you know the metal should not be having you know the process should not be having excessive spatter. Uh, also, it should not have any porosity inside. Okay, so all these uh, issues uh, are are you know sensed by the sensors and suppose there is something has gone wrong inside the bead okay there is no point in continuing uh, in spite of the defects till the entire product is you know entire product or component is manufactured what happens uh, you know you will have to waste the you know you will have to just uh, you know uh, discard that component when it has a, a defect so as and when the defect is formed at least you can stop it and then you know you can discard at the time itself so that you can you can save you know lot of time lot of resources all that okay that is the advantage with you know in situ manufacturing and that is possible with you know industrial internet of things when you have uh, you know appropriate sensors and also the appropriate algorithms to you know handle this uh, this uh, data and then uh, you know take corrective actions so basically Internet of Things is a seamless integration of physical and digital worlds. All right. So you have the basically people, you have the things, you have the business. Okay. All these things are, you know, in a integrated well. So the scope of Industrial Internet of Things is uh, like this. You have the, you need to have the artificial intelligence, uh, uh, and then uh, you know machine learning, deep learning. All these things are subsets of, uh, you know, artificial intelligence. So artificial intelligence, we have the natural intelligence, okay? Uh, we, the humans, have the natural intelligence. Animals have the natural intelligence. Of course, this uh, level of intelligence, degree of inter the intelligence differs from, uh, you know, one animal to another animal, all that, okay? But we have the natural intelligence. Suppose you build a, you build a machine which has some intelligence built into the system. It is called the artificial intelligence, all right? So intelligence demonstrated by the machines. So these days, uh, you know, you can find uh, textbooks, uh, you know, leading textbooks uh, are named intelligent agents. Okay, this is a very common title for the artificial intelligence uh, concepts. Uh, yeah, so basically the inter artificial intelligence uh, depends upon all these disciplines, mathematics, psychology, linguistics, psych you know, philosophy, all these things are part of the artificial intelligence. All right. So so uh, you know naturally you know uh, when we have you know our own natural intelligence when some incident happens okay we look at it we give some thought to it okay why this uh, incident has happened what went wrong okay all that so what is happening we are learning from that particular incident all right so learning is part of us so with this learning we try to avoid such kind of situation in future that means we are taking some decision Okay, so we learn and take decisions. So same thing is, uh, you know, part of the intelligence system also. The machine or the system or the product will be able to perceive its environment through the sensors and then the uh, actions that can minim you know, that can maximize the success rate of the product. Okay, so you can look at this particular, uh, you know, self car driving uh, system. Okay, you just imagine. Uh, you know, you get into the car and then enter your destination, okay, and then you just sleep. You don't have to drive the car, all right, and the car will be able to, you know, uh, select appropriate route. Appropriate route means, uh, I mean, uh, the shortest distance, not only shortest distance, the road condition, traffic condition, all that it, it uh, decides, and then chooses the best possible route okay and uh, in the journey it avoids the collision between the vehicles by maintaining proper vehicle to vehicle distance all right and maintains the you know optimal speed and then by the time it reaches the destination uh, you know at that time it just gives you an alert saying that destination has been reached okay so that you can get up and then you, know, you, you can get into your office 
all right see how nice it is to you know imagine you know you, you are able to you know relax uh, you know sleep and then you know you will not be tired it also you know not only that you know you, your driving uh, will be mood all right if you are not in good mood then there is a uh, high likelihood of you know accidents happening all that okay but this kind of an autonomous system there is no mood there okay it is just it follows the rules and regulations okay as human beings we may not be you know following rules and regulations traffic rules all that okay changing the lanes all that you know, just like that uh, we we, uh, we observe some people doing that okay but an autonomous system will not do all such uh, you know things it will just follow the rules and regulations and takes you to the destination of course this kind of a system to come to india you know takes uh, some time uh, but it's only a matter of time okay our road conditions have to be you know uh, the infrastructure has to be uh, you know enhanced all that but this this system is already a reality it has been tested okay this particular self driving car system uh, in the in the western world also you can look at this particular painting this painting has been done by an artificial system okay not by a human being okay so the system should have the intelligence you know to choose right kind of uh, you know colors uh, paints uh, you know the right mix of uh, shades all that so yeah that is this is another uh, you know, fantastic example for the artificial intelligence so basically your system has to mimic the you know cognitive functions of the humans what are the cognitive functions learning and decision making so your your machine also should be able to learn and it also has to make certain decisions all right so machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence it's basically it involves you know algorithms so if you have the very efficient algorithms then they will be able to handle the data huge amount of data is uh, the order of the day today okay so the algorithms have to handle the data and then give the correct uh, you know uh, decisions so artificial neural networks regression analysis models so these are the you know typical uh, you know um, um, algorithms that you can we are already using them okay so deep learning is another uh, subset of uh, you know machine learning and uh, so the word here deep means the data is uh, processed at different uh, levels or different uh, you know layers that is what we mean here deep learning okay these are concepts extensively studied nowadays by the computer science uh, uh, students all right but it is not limited to computer science it is very much relevant in all other engineering do domains as well okay so for example you think of a scenario where in the conveyor some uh, three four types of components are uh, you know coming and your robot has to detect your robot has to detect uh, the components and then sort them into different uh, you know uh, uh, boxes for for you know packaging so unless the robot uh, you know detects these components properly it will not be able to you know sort out then human beings are to be employed there isn't it so that is where the application that is just one example i am just throwing uh, uh, so you can look at this uh, you know uh, for example you have a system camera system uh, you know, it has to identify the which animal is it okay so first you know it may you know you may build an intelligence say you know like uh, if it is moving it is a, it is a, some lively uh, you know thing animal okay if it is not moving maybe it is a stone or something like that okay that is the lowest level all right next higher level is you know whether it has the legs how many legs okay whether it has a trunk okay or horns are there so, you know such information you will be processing at different levels and finally you will your system will be able to come up with a you know thing that it is a elephant based on the features body features of the elephant and just i am giving you this example for you to understand what is the deep learning okay yeah so you have the business you know different business trends uh, you know uh, initially we had the web based uh, you know marketing and then e business where you know selling and buying were happening on the you know internet okay online transactions digital marketing where internet and physical devices are connected and you know basically to promote to, to market the the products all right then digital business which involves you know this uh, machine learning uh, kind of uh, technologies and uh, you know in future uh, we are going to see the autonomous business okay that is where smart machines come into picture the the moment you say autonomous uh, there is no human 
assistance okay without human interference the things must uh, proceed okay uh, you know we are already witnessing this particular thing uh, one example i can tell you the uh, you know mobile internet uh, you know banking app mobile banking app okay At the moment you enter into that it says uh, you know you have a pre approved loan of 6 lakhs 5 lakhs something like that okay so that is not done by the humans all right you were uh, the banking software it, ha- it it processes the data what is the what is your uh, you know monthly salary because your statement is available there right if it is a salaried account so uh, what is the monthly salary what is the repayment capacity of the uh, person all that data will be processed and you know finally your credit uh, credit score will be calculated based on the credit score it gives automatically it approves automatically the loan okay so you don't have to visit the bank uh, just in uh, in in a few you know one or two minutes in fact you can just uh, you know press uh, the corresponding options there follow the on screen instructions and uh, you know next a couple of minutes is enough for you to get uh, you know loan credited into your uh, you know account all right so this is autonomous autonomous business right so this uh will spread this kind of thing will spread into various fields okay in future so uh, the you know uh, internet of things is you know system of systems that is the you know uh, buzzword now so you have you know value uh, analytics uh, value from the analytics so you have a lot of data so the analytics involve you know descriptive diagnostic predictive and prescriptive okay so what has happened why is that you know that particular situation has happened and uh, you know what happen in future and what is that i have to do okay system your machine should uh, you know answer all these things and then act accordingly okay sometimes uh, you know some human input may be given and sometimes you know decision also can be automated so finally action will happen okay this is the you know highest level of you know sophistication so the cloud computing uh, you know we are already you know reaping the fruits of cloud computing okay uh, so it minimizes the it infrastructure costs cloud computing provides you know data storage somewhere it will be you know some server will be used and you you are using the you know drive these days google drive all these things it is nothing but the cloud computing right so the computing power is used uh, you know you, you know now they are you know giving some free of cost uh, some Uh, some amount of data okay but uh, you know beyond that if you want you have to pay for that because servers are maintained somewhere and experts are available elsewhere they need to be you know paid all that so no active management by the user so you don't have to maintain your own servers all that all right so functions distributed so so the enter uh, enterprise cloud and public cloud different types of clouds you may have so you may have your own cloud in your own Uh, organization or you may have a public cloud which may be maintained in a separate country also okay so these are the features centralization of infrastructure and the uh, whatever amount of you know uh, storage space you use accordingly building will be done so you have so many advantages like you know peak load capacity all that you know utilization and you know efficiency so many advantages are there with the cloud computing facilities so the finally i'll just touch upon this uh, digital twin uh, because uh, time is running out so digital twin is nothing but uh, you know uh, your product uh, you, you you are going to represent your product as a virtual system okay physical system is represented as a virtual system all right uh, so virtual representation of a physical object or a system so it just uh, okay that is how the digital twin uh you know works so it is a it is basically a model okay mathematical model an equation or set of equations all right so digital twin provides one single source of truth okay so it enables the it eliminates the supervision so no human being is required there the system will be able to you know uh function on its own that is the you know a hallmark of digital twin so it the digital twin enables optimization the this this system will be functioning in a uh, optimized fashion so as so that you no know, you will you will be you know reducing the costs and increasing the productivity all those things so your digital twin can be uh, you know one machine can be a digital twin your entire traffic system in a city can be a digital twin
llevar Your, uh, you know, um, uh, lighting system. So many different systems are integrated. That is a, you know, city-based digital twin production. Okay, your entire factory can be one digital twin, biological digital twin. All these, uh, you know, different types of digital twins you have. Of course, you know, you have. Uh, yeah, I'm not going into the details of uh, you know other things uh, because of uh, the time that a lot of it. Otherwise, uh, any questions from the participants to the speaker? Um, okay, I think uh, no more questions from the participants. So I think um, we should thank Dr. Venke Garu for uh, giving us such a wonderful uh, uh, insight about uh, industrial IoT. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you very much for that for your efforts. And thanks for sparing the time as well.